Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. Welcome to EV Components Review. On the bench today is a Far Driver 96850. Uh, this controller has a bad flash, or so I've been told it's a bad flash. And so it doesn't work. And uh, I had to depot it to at least be able to get to the programming port so I can try to reflash it over ST-Link and um, hopefully that will get the thing running again. We'll see soon enough. Poured myself some coffee. Yeah, it's 4.17 a.m. my time. I'm a night owl. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so this controller was fully potted. Uh, and let's get into it a little bit here. So on the top cover, um, these silicone grommets, they're just kind of pressed into place around the aluminum studs. So you put the, the ABS plastic shell in place and then you kind of press those around them. And well, I've put silicone underneath all these things so they're all basically glued down. Uh, there was a sticker over top of this hole and I pulled that off because it was interfering with the uh, battery plus uh, silicone grommet. So anyway, I peeled it off and then I filled the hole with more silicone and otherwise you don't get them like this they come with a little round sticker that's over that spot but that's where they pour in the potting once they have the controller all assembled uh, this is just abs plastic it's not glass reinforced or anything um, you know fairly inexpensive uh, something that is extremely commonly molded out of china um, strong enough to do the job uh, not super awesome not super terrible uh, definitely liked the uh, <laughs> the polyvinyl chloride glass reinforced plastic that was in the Vodol shell more because that is like an absolutely brilliantly tough piece of plastic whereas this is just you know crappy ABS um, you know which is kind of the same fare that you get out of like say Keomoto uh, which is far driver so yeah it comes off the same molding line I'm pretty sure same tech used everything um, glass reinforcing wears your molds out faster uh, which adds cost and of course glass reinforced and better quality plastics cost more too and uh, So anyway, yeah, that's really impressive aspect of Vodal and not so much for far drivers slash Keomoto anyway um, Let's set that aside and let's look a little bit closer here <clears throat> so uh, Here's pretty much the important bits right the shell is of less importance than what's inside it and Let's pull off this little daughter board here talk about that for a minute there we go all right so uh everything here was potted you know i had to depot it uh clean everything washed it all in denatured alcohol after i pulled up all the potting uh to get all the little bits out of everything you know still like stuff down in between like legs and components but you know everything is all pretty clean and stuff but uh yeah once it once i was washed it all down with denatured alcohol and a toothbrush then I took it out to the kitchen sink and put uh, dish soap all over everything, scrubbed it again with a toothbrush under water to clean it up the rest of the way. Uh, water doesn't hurt electronics like people think it does. If you leave them immersed in water, that's another story. Uh, but, you know, I'm talking about like, you know, several minutes worth of scrubbing on the thing with the toothbrush under running water and then shake all the water off and dry it out and then that doesn't cause any problems. I'll tell a little side story from many, many years ago. I was telling this to somebody on WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever. I talked to people on Discord. Don't remember where I told the story, but many years ago, we're talking about late 1980s. Uh, I was working for an electronics repair place in uh, Arizona. And uh, one of our large customers was a restaurant chain. And that restaurant chain, they had a bunch of computer equipment all over the place, like restaurants tend to do. And that equipment would get absolutely filthy with food, spilled drinks on it, whatever. You know, the hands of the uh, chefs or whatever were just grungy or, you know, like say, like around a fry post. Uh, you know, all that stuff is getting exposed to grease, uh, you know, that's uh, evaporated off all the time so electronics would get absolutely grungy slimy with food and that's what would typically kill the electronics or why it would cause it to malfunction so i would go pick up whatever the piece of equipment is bring a replacement with me take the piece that's not working back to the shop uh, take it all apart and stick everything in the dishwasher yep literally stick it in the dishwasher without soap just you know use the surfacting factor of water heat movement all that kind of stuff to wash everything 
Uh, and so going in, it would be covered in crumbs and old coffee and God knows what else, dead cockroaches. Uh, and then it would come out nice and clean and washed. And then it would take it outside because this was Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, where it was nice and hot in the summertime. Uh, lots of sunshine. And I would take all of that stuff and I'd put it on metal racks uh, behind our shop and let it dry in the sun. Uh, given an hour and all the water was gone, everything was evaporated away, everything was all dry, put it all back together again, works like new. So uh, have washed many, many, many things <laughs> in the dishwasher just to clean all the food crap off of it from that restaurant chain. Uh, water is not as bad for electronics as people think it is. Obviously, running electronics and water is not a good combination. Um, electronics that are not powered up, uh, and you wash them in the dishwasher, or like I did in the kitchen sink, that's not going to cause any problems. Anyway, so yeah, a little amusing story from back in the 1980s, uh, when I was working at an electronics, uh, repair place. <clears throat> anyway, um, so here's the daughter board. Uh... This right here, I thought originally was a 7805 linear regulator, and it's not. It is a MOSFET, and following its little traces, go over to those two pins right there on this connector, or I'm pretty sure they do. I haven't actually like owned them out, but most likely this MOSFET either turns something off external that goes across those two pins, or um, you uh, short those two together kind of a thing, and then this MOSFET then powers or applies battery power, to the main DC to DC, which is right here. Uh, this is a very common way that controllers are powered up or enabled is to simply power up the main DC to DC and then everything else gets power and then it just starts working. Uh, yeah, extremely, extremely common way of enabling controllers. Uh, I've seen it in literally hundreds of different controllers from different sources. Uh, so that MOSFET and one of these two opto isolators is about the only thing that's different on this uh, daughter board uh, than what is in the uh, 96 530 teardown that I did before. Uh, one of my theories about this controller, so this one is sine cos sensors, and the 96 530 that I have is Hall's. I had a theory about them, and I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, so my theory was is that the uh, firmware inside the CPUs, because I you know, looking at the different firmwares for these different uh, far driver controllers, I don't see one that says sine co sensors versus one that says halls. That you don't get that distinction in the firmware. Uh, so what defines one as sine co and the other one halls? I don't know. Um, it's got to be firmware. That's the only thing else. So anyway, because I wasn't seeing it in anything about the firmware, my assumption was this little board was different in some way. And it's not that I can determine that would possibly help this. So my assumption was is that there was a chip on here that would convert sine co signals into hull signals that the CPU could understand. But there is a MOSFET, couple op, um, couple of opto isolators, some TVS dials for protection, and that's it. So bitch anything that you could take this board and plug it into my 96530 or take the 96530 board and plug it in here and the controller would be none the wiser. Probably work either way. So can't really say that uh, there is a converter chip here. It's got to be all in the firmware, but how, I don't know. Yep, drinking coffee. All right, so let me set this thing aside. And let's talk about the logic board. Pull that guy up. All right, so um, yeah, obviously here's your three connectors that the daughter board sits on. Um, over here is your uh, DC to DC converter. Uh, I saw this on the 530 as well, that you've got a MOV on there. So, um, you know, any kind of high voltage spikes that might possibly get through, that MOV is gonna, you know, basically shunt that to battery minus or ground. Um, which is good. Um, yeah, don't typically see mobs on um, motor controllers. So it's kind of cool to see that there. And it was on the 530 as well. Anyway, I've uh, got a couple ceramics in here for dealing with high frequency noise off the battery bus um, from down here, pretty much. <laughs> uh, it's where that would come from. Uh, this is a 160 volt electrolytic capacitor. On the input side, there's your DC to DC buck chip. Uh, here's your output filter cap, uh, which it says on the circuit board is uh, whatever that is, 16, 1500 microfarad. 
and here's the inductor for that. Uh, there's another cap that's part of that as well. So that's all your uh, battery voltage uh, step down to 12 volts. Uh, then you've got a 7805 linear regulator and um, several people have commented on this and I was already thinking it anyway. You know, linear regulators, they have a place in the world and for stuff like this, they do a great job. Don't really necessarily need DC to DC converters, uh, you know, like which I've said many times in the past that I prefer those. Uh, linear regulators will do the trick too. Uh, and they cost less money and they require less filtering. So, you know, you need this big electrolytic capacitor on here to filter the output from this buck converter. Whereas this little 7805 just needs a little dinky cap because it's just not making very much high frequency noise. In the case of like right here, that's the 3.3 volt linear regulator, which powers the CPU. Again, it's got another little dinky cap. That's it. Uh, so uh, less cost and for an application like this where you don't need a lot of amperage, use a linear reg. Okay, uh, here is your three gate drivers, here, here, and here. These are very generic parts. Uh, you can get the same part or one that's very, very similar to it with the same pinout from a dozen different sources. Nothing particularly special about it. Uh, this is a quad op amp package. Again, you know, it's a jelly bean part. You can get them from a dozen different sources from a dozen different manufacturers. And they're pin for pin compatible. Drop it in place and it'll work. Uh, the CPU here, this is a Giga Devices uh, GD uh, 32F10, STM32F103, yeah, so GD32F103, uh, so it's basically a clone of the STM part. Uh, you know, the part number is all the same, just starts with GD rather than ST, um, or STM30, rather, uh, and, and of course it says Giga Devices on it, but pretty darn sure you unsolder this and put an STM32 F103 solder down the board and it's gonna be pin for pin compatible probably all the firmware run on it everything so uh, you know this is this is again a case of a commodity part probably when far driver was um, building these controllers the uh, STM part was out of stock and the gig devices part was so they dropped those in there and uh, yeah they kind of work pretty much interchangeably with the uh, STM32F405 versus the GD32F405, uh, those ones are not exactly the same, but they're close enough that eh, the differences are not super important. Probably with the 103s, they are actually pin for pin, registry for registry, everything the same. Uh, the current concentrators or current loops, uh, you have linear halls inside either one of them. And uh, those are C1612s. Uh, linear halls is probably about the only part number I'm really going to talk about specifically. Uh, that was asked about on Facebook, so I'm just mentioning it again. And I mentioned it in my macro videos, which will come up after a while. Uh, all your caps, as you can see, are 120 volts. Because this is the uh, 96 series controllers, which can really run at, like, say, a, or, or you can actually run them at 100 volts. Whereas, like, say, the 100 volt controllers, that's their max, but you can't run them there. You can only really run them at, say, like, you know, 84, 86 volts or so. Uh, whereas these things, you know, because they've got the higher voltage components, you can actually run them at higher voltage, hence the 120 volt caps and 135 volt MOSFETs. So, anyway, uh, on the back side of the board, uh, this is an aspect I don't like. Uh, notice this on the uh, 96530, and here it is again on the 90 si 96 uh, 850. Um, so battery minus is here and here on here, and this is an RF plane right here. So it only takes a single ground post, but this isn't really a current path, and it's seriously choked right there anyway. If this was a current path, that spot would definitely burn through. However, battery plus, this is a, a reinforcing current path for what's down here, and that's what I don't like about it. Uh, you shouldn't do this. Um, yeah, uh, really what should be done is you reinforce all this stuff and that way you don't depend on the logic board in any way, shape, or form for current carrying capability. But in this case, you are. Um, so, nah, <laughs> not very good. Uh, and that's true for the 530 as well. Uh, and, you know, like I've harped on this on KO Moto controllers. They're doing the same thing. They flat out absolutely have to have the, uh, the copper on the logic board to reinforce their power stages because their power stages battery plus buses are just so flat out inadequate. Uh, and here it is, Far Driver doing the same thing. Gosh, I wonder why. Could it be that Far Driver and Kyomoto are actually the exact same development? Hmm, I don't know. Is that, 
Wow, is that a coincidence? Hmm, maybe it is. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, definitely a coincidence. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, uh, or they really are one and the same. <laughs> yeah, and that's really what it is. Okay, so here is the uh, power stage, and let's flip that over so all the words are right set up. There we go. Okay, so uh, something I like about this a good bit, um, you've got 18 ceramic caps here. Uh, super cool, good job, far driver. Uh, in the future, when you do more stuff that gets renamed as uh, Keomoto, uh, please insist that they get more than the postage stamp, you know, symbol symbolic three ceramic caps like Keomoto is doing nowadays. Um, insist that they put 18 ceramic caps like you have on here on their controllers because they are flat out needed and they're already inadequate on the KO controllers as is. So this is how it should be. This is much more like it. And quite frankly, this is not bad. I, I uh, would have to say it's adequate for the job. It's good enough. Uh, would I like more? I always like more ceramic caps, yes. Uh, but this is enough. Okay, so, um, yeah, watch my macro videos if you want to learn a bit about MOSFET packages, because I will go into this package, which is the TO263 P7. I think that's what it's called. I keep constantly trying to mix up that name. Yeah, TO263 P7. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Anyway, uh, go into this versus TO220 versus TO163 packages. Uh, so, yeah, you might learn something about electronics by watching that. Uh, these buses are not super good. So, battery plus is this ring all the way around the outside, and you can see they sort of kind of reinforced it with solder. All I can say is meh, <laughs> not very good. Uh, yeah, and you know, this is the same sort of stuff that you see in KO Moto stuff, you know, which is also Far Driver, is, you know, kind of bodge things together like this. It's not very ideal. You really need to put copper on all this stuff, uh, you know, to do it right. So, uh, right here is battery plus, and that's battery minus. And so, yeah, the current path is a bit tortured, go all the way around to get on the outside. Um... The way this is laid out is a little bit interesting. So, because this ring is on the outside, those three MOSFETs, those three MOSFETs, that's six, and those three and those three are all high side MOSFETs, you know, kind of placed in this sort of U shape around here. And then, uh, you know, here is battery minus right here. So this circuit trace all through here and across those three studs, which are not a current path, by the way, which is good. So good job there. Um, and then all of these MOSFETs in here, all the way across here, these are all low side MOSFETs. So uh, if you're wondering what the heck does low side versus high side mean, um, being that these ones see battery voltage, you know, like in this case, oh, that could be like 100 volts or 82 volts or something like that. Those are categorically high side because they actually see the voltage of the pack. Whereas these ones here, these ones see ground potential, you know, zero volts, hence the name low side MOSFETs. So high side because they see battery voltage, low side because they do not. They just see ground. So, um, yeah, uh, and more or less what you see right here is whichever set of MOSFETs is turned on. So these ones are turned on. This is at ground potential, more or less uh, zero volts. Uh, if these are off and these ones are turned on, then right here in the phase you see pack voltage, more or less. You know, minus losses and things like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, depending on whether these are on or these are on, and of course, when these are on, these had better be turned off and vice versa. Otherwise, you just create a dead short across the pack and then explosions happen uh, and you burn out your controller. So if these are on um, and these are off, then right here at the phase bus, which is across here, you see battery voltage. If these are off and these are turned on, then here at the uh, phase bus, you see no voltage, zero voltage. Of course, if everything is turned off, you see no voltage too, but you have no current path. So if these MOSFETs are turned on, then you have a current path from here straight to battery minus the pack. If these are off and these are turned on, then from battery plus of the pack, you have a current path to here. Uh, if all these MOSFETs are turned off, you just have an open, you don't have any current path. So yeah, it's one set on, other set on, never both on at the same time. Okay, uh, pretty decent power stage. This is definitely my favorite power stage from Far Driver. Uh, yeah, some things are not so great, and I'll talk about that in the macro video. So, anyway, folks, hope that helps you out. Talk to you later.